You mentioned paying respects to the uh, legacy of EBJ, Eddie Bernice Johnson, and um, remembering Palestinian child prisoners. Can you explain? So Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson was one of the few co-sponsors of a bill that has been on the floor of Congress for years, uh, initially sponsored by Congresswoman Betty McCollum, to penalize Israel for its detention of child prisoners. Thousands of children arbitrarily detained, put in military courts, solitary confinement, and yes, sexual violence that's been documented by human rights organizations against them, and there have been no repercussions. So I want you to think about this, you know, just the thought of conditioning aid to Israel, you know, so that it doesn't indiscriminately bomb entire populations, has not been able to find any home in mainstream American politics. For years, just trying to stop Israel from picking up children and throwing them into military prisons where they disappear for decades at times, has not found any thrust in mainstream American politics. Whereas any resolution that is pro-Israel will make it past both chambers relatively quickly. When people talk about Israeli hostages and then talk about Palestinian prisoners, there's already a problem with that framing. First of all, all 2.2 million people in Gaza are hostages. Every Palestinian that lives under occupation is a hostage. But all of those prisoners that have been picked up, women, children, innocent people with absolutely no process of making sure that they're treated right or given uh, fair trials or even given a communication line with their families or with any government to help them is absolutely criminal. All of those prisoners are also hostages. And when you, when, you, when you are already propose this idea that there are Israeli hostages and Palestinian prisoners, you're already implying that one group is complicit in their own devastation, whereas another group has had devastation visited upon them entirely out of their own doing. And so it's important for people to learn about children prisoners who are indeed hostages to an apartheid system and even what happened during that four-day truce, which all of us hoped would be extended and become permanent, where 150 Palestinian prisoners were released, Israel just went and picked up another 135 in the West Bank and threw them in prisons. That's what I mean when I say you're not addressing the root of the problem. The root of the problem is the occupation. The root of the problem is the apartheid. The root of the problem is the desperation that then drives the creation of all sorts of circumstances that will only further lead to the devastation of everyone, right? If you don't solve that problem, and at the root of that problem is the dehumanization of the Palestinian, because no one is raising alarms for those Palestinian hostages in Israeli military prisons. No one's putting up their pictures, and no one's talking about who they are and their human stories, and the violence that's been wreaked against them at every level. So if you don't solve not just the root of occupation, but also the dehumanization that drives the occupation, which is unfortunately so pervasive right now in the discourse, then you're going to continue to have this gap in how the world sees the plight of the Palestinians and how, unfortunately, the American public uh, sees the problem of the Palestinians. And to you, big peace agreements like, uh of the like of Abraham Accords should include Palestine. Abraham Accords is nothing but an agreement in which you slap the name of Abraham on arms deals in exchange for countries being able to undertake their own unholy pursuits. They use one of the holiest names in history and continue to erase the main victims of this atrocity. And so the Abraham Accords are an insult to humanity, an insult to the Palestinians, and an, ins an insult to the name of Abraham. But do you think something like that, agreements of that nature, of that scale, could be made 
that include the Palestinian people, and that would actually have make progress. If they're honest to the plight of the Palestinians, if they are honest to the roots of the problem, absolutely. Look, again, peace is sought, but peace cannot be used to silence. The entire peace process has you know, been, been hung over the Palestinians all of these years, while settlements continue to expand and their situation only continue to get worse. Is Israel really going to remove the 700,000, 800,000 settlers, right? And uh, suddenly change its tune on a two-state solution? Benjamin Netanyahu is saying right now, and he's speaking to, unfortunately, what is clearly a majority of the Israeli public, that there will never be a Palestinian state. So these peace talks cannot be used to suffocate all of the work of justice and bringing Israel to accountability. The world has to act when they see apartheid. The world has to act when they see occupation. If the world fails to bring Israel to a place of accountability, then a few countries that have their own agendas cannot put forth anything meaningful for the victims of Israel being the Palestinian people.